So I bought a bag and she sent me a dairy milk chocolate bar. Hey everyone, this is a video based on how we can all protect ourselves from fraudsters when we are buying uh, pre-loved bags on the internet, or maybe not even pre-loved, it could be designer clothing, designer shoes, uh, could even be technology, any things that you're buying that have got a high ticket price item. How can you be as protected as possible? Now, I need to credit one of you for this video, Janie. Janie wrote to me and she has got a mind-blowing story that when I read it, it's full of twists and turns and I'm going to read it out to you. And not only that, but at the end, I'm going to go through something that actually happened to me couple of weeks ago and also some of the things that I do to stay as protected as possible and I do think there is only so much we can all do. Sometimes when it comes down to this there is no 100% way of staying protected. All we can do are a few things that I'm going to share with you that will help us as much as possible. This letter has come from Janie and Janie's situation is as a result of Depop. Listen to this, as I say, full of twists and turns and I was shocked at what happened to Janie. So Janie, Janie wrote to me and she said, I was looking for a Louis Vuitton key pool. Uh, I've been a Depop user for a couple of years now, found some really great sellers on there. I started to search and I'm really into vintage rather than buying new. I found a 55 bandoulier, I hope I've said that right, <laughs> um, that looked in great condition for the price. That should have been the first red flag. That is what Janie said. She, Janie then went on to make an offer that was £100 less than what the seller wanted. The seller messaged back, no haggling, accepted the price, no problem whatsoever. Janie then said that should have been my second red flag really, that even though I'd offered £100 less, this seller was like, yeah, it's fine, you can have it. And then the third red flag was that the account was a new account with no feedback. That is always a dead giveaway. I see that a lot actually on eBay. I So I, I like to shop a lot of vintage and pre-loved and I've actually gone more towards shopping from Luxury Pro Promise because I can actually go in and look at a bag as opposed to trying to judge it from a photo and if I'm not happy, I, I don't buy it. When it's online, there are so many shady things people do, which again, I'm gonna tell you about. You bought the bag and you said a couple of days later, this bag hadn't arrived and you were like, no big deal. Then you contacted the seller and she gave you a shipping reference. All appeared to go well. A few days later, it still hadn't turned up and you checked the reference number and it said that it had been delivered. Panic set in because it hadn't been delivered to you and you knocked at your neighbors. There was like seven neighbors. You knocked at their doors. No one had seen this parcel. You wrote to the courier company that she'd used only to find out that for the bag that she bought, she had been sent a dairy milk chocolate bar. And the crazy thing is, Janie didn't even receive that. That's the mad thing. Where is this parcel? If there is actually a shipping reference, please can someone tell me if you know how this scam works? Because Janie and I do not have a clue. The seller had an actual tracking number. She declared what was in the parcel, which was this chocolate bar. Is it that she'd raised the tracking but had never actually handed the parcel over like you know with Hermes parcels they have those lockers like I always use the lockers sometimes you can start the process at home of I'm going to return something but then you never actually drop it off at the locker so there is a tracking number it's just that it never got tracked because you never took it there in the first place I think that may be how they do it but you go on to say after all this you received a spurious Royal Mail tracking number, which showed that it had been delivered to someone in your road, but it had been delivered before the item had been shipped. This is the crazy thing. How is it that you can have a tracking number that shows something has been delivered, but the tracking, but the delivery happened before the tracking number was even generated. How do you do that? I'm mind blown, I wanna know how they do it. Long story short, this, this item never turned up. Janie ended up going through Depop, going through, I think you said eBay as well, and you, I, I doubt that you heard back from the seller, because that's another thing. Once this stuff doesn't arrive, they go quiet because, you know, you said you did finally get your money back, which was a massive relief, and you ended up 
going on to Vestair Collective and you got the key pool, which is what you wanted in the first place. And you have said the lesson learned is that if it's too good to be true, it normally is. So let's discuss this. Here are a few things that you can do to protect yourself. I'm actually gonna start with the story that I have, which is to do with this Dior bag. It's to do actually specifically with the Dior book tote. So I bought the Dior book tote 2018, before the price increase, the price I got it for, I'm very happy with. I like that bag, I use it a lot. Anyway, I had a situation where several weeks ago, I'd gone to the gym and I used my bag at the gym. And the gym that I go to um, is quite common. People tend to use like the Deal Book Tote or they use um, holdalls from Louis Vuitton or other, other bags. And so when you go there, it's not like you're overdressed. If anything, you just <laughs> blend in with everyone else there. Well, I was there and there was this other girl and I got talking to her and uh, I took my book tote out of the locker because I was going and she looked at it and like paused for a minute and then said, can I show you mine? And she took hers out of the locker and the two, when you put them side by side, looked very different and she, she'd been scammed. Um, what had ended up happening, she bought hers on Etsy and the price that she had paid was cheaper than actually what it is if you go into a shop, but it was a, a good price. She paid over 1,500 pounds for this bag. And when you put the two things together, I felt awful for her because she had gone past it. She bought it a while ago. She'd gone past the point where she could have even got her money back, I guess. And the things that gave it away were massively the material. Um, this is something that when you buy these bags, and that's a difficult thing to do unless you own one of these bags already, but you've got to be so um, familiar with what the material looks like. On the book tote, for example, the material's really thick. It's almost luggage-like. And on hers, the material was quite flimsy and it was bent and the handles flopped to one side. Whereas on the actual book tote, it's all really rigid. That bag's quite hard to like crumple up, actually. Um, the other thing that gave it away is that where you've got the oblique pattern, you know how you've got the Dior oblique bit written in either the maroon or the dark blue, and then you've got the background. On the background, the, the book tote, the background is actually like a creamy brown color, but on hers, it was white. And uh, finally, the other thing that gave it away was that her book tote was in a size that didn't exist. It was somewhere in between the medium and the large. And um, I, I felt really bad. I felt really bad for her. She was really upset. She was telling me how much that she spent on this bag and she'd spent, as I say, over 1,500 pounds. And I felt terrible for her. I don't know what she ended up doing, but she was really, really, um, visibly upset and um and i think i think the unfortunate thing was is that she because she hadn't seen been up close to one she'd gone ahead and bought one not knowing what those particular details look like so there that's something that happened uh, to someone unsuspecting and my personal thoughts are um that when it comes to fake items i've got no problem with people going in that direction. I get why people do it. Um, the point of this video and the, the problem that I do have is when people are scammed into thinking that they're buying the real thing and they spend a lot of money on that item and they're duped into actually buying a fake. So here are some points to be aware of. The dimensions. I, I see it a lot on the book tote. I've seen it before on the Louis Vuitton Neverfull when I've gone out. The things that very often give it away are that the dimensions are off. I have also seen, um, I, this actually happened a couple of years ago, uh, I saw a Chanel flap bag and the size didn't exist. Again, that size was somewhere in between a, well it looked like a jumbo, but it was too big for a jumbo, but it was too small for a maxi. Also it was made of a PU fake patent uh, leather and there were just details about it that when you looked, if you'd seen the real thing, you'd be like, oh yeah, okay, so that's a bit off, that's a bit off, I can now see. And for that person, if that person had paid thousands for that bag, I, I think that's really unfair. So check the dimensions. If you can, try not be awkward about this, okay? It, let's say, um, let's say you want to buy the deal book tote, but you want to, you found one online, the deal's really good. You're like, I don't really want to spend over 2,000 pounds on what is a tote bag. I would, 
this is what I would do. I would go into Dior or any of these stores and I would actually go and ask to look at the real thing and take mental notes, like feel the product, look at what the material looks like close up, look at the inside, what do the zips look like? Are there in any inner pockets? What do those look like? What do the serial numbers look like? Now I understand that if you've gone in there with the intention of not buying and you're just you're trying to like scout out what a genuine one looks like, it could be awkward, but I think there are ways of doing it where you can be subtle. Check the colours as well and the material. Sometimes you will see, uh, say for example, um, you might see, I've seen this actually at markets, there is, there is a market that I'm really surprised about. It's to the side of Selfridges on Oxford Street. I don't know how many of you have seen it. It's out in the broad daylight and they sell a lot of fake bags. And what I've seen on it are bags that don't exist, but they look real because the material looks really good. The logo looks really good. The zips look really good. And that's another way that I think people get duped. Obviously on a market stall, you're gonna know that's fake because it's gonna be a really cheap price. But sometimes you can be duped into thinking that that bag, because the quality of the materials is so good, it must be real, but actually you've bought it and that style doesn't exist. Try and educate yourself on the authenticity codes. My first ever vintage Chanel flap bag, which is here, uh, and it's in the small, the mini size. I had had my eye on this on Vestair Collective for a long time, uh, but at the time when I bought it, which was last year, because I'd never really bought pre-loved Chanel before, I wasn't really educated on the, the date codes and how it all worked, and I spent a lot of time uh, on uh, like purse bop and other places like that, learning what those codes should look like, what the codes should start with. Okay, I, I do wanna say that there is only so much we can all do. I had another one of you um, write to me the other day from Singapore. You'd seen something on Vestair Collective, but there are horror stories on Vestair Collective of you know people being sold fakes or sent fakes or people being sent packages that have got nothing in them. Um, likewise, there are horror stories on eBay. And I think with any of the places that we go and buy from online, you cannot escape the fact that those scams are out there. Um, I have been really lucky because I have bought quite a lot on Vestair Collective over the years and but I've also I've always bought from sellers that have got good feedback and a lot of good feedback. Um, I try and buy from professional sellers and I always pay with a credit card. Never not pay with a credit card. It doesn't matter where you're buying from the item from because you will have then protection. If you receive an empty box you will have some level of protection. If you receive a bag and it's blatantly fake, even if the seller's like, no, it's not, the credit card will force the hand of that seller to take that bag back. Well, that's what I found anyway. Not so much with bags, but years ago, we were moving house and the, um, <laughs> the people clearing the house didn't turn up and we phoned them and they said, well, no, we're not coming over today. We're coming over next week. We had no boxes to clear the house out or anything. And uh, because we'd sold the house, we had to get out at a certain time and they wouldn't give us our money back. And I phoned the credit card there and then and Barclays gave us our money back. We couldn't move that day. We had to like extend it a bit. But anyway, credit cards are really good for that. When the package arrives, set up your phone and film yourself unboxing it or maybe if you live with someone get them to hold the phone show the box close up before you unpackage it and show all of the seller tape and that it hasn't been tampered with then open the item if that box is empty or if there's something in it that you didn't buy it's some level of proof that you're not making it up and that that is how the item arrived really i think that's all any of us can do is to be super aware really vigilant don't be buying from accounts that have no or really low, fee low feedback. Uh, Janie, you actually told me in your letter, you've just reminded me, that when this person did get feedback, you contacted the buyer and sh this seller had done the exact same thing to the other buyer. So don't buy from people that have got no feedback or little feedback. Always use a credit card. Film yourself unboxing this stuff. Also bear in mind that there is another 
um, I don't want to scare anyone, you know, for most of the time these transactions will be fine. But there's another scam where actually it's the couriers that are taking the stuff out of the packaging. I have one of you write to me, oh, this was a couple of years ago now, saying that you bought something and when it arrived, you could see the sellotape had been cut open and then restuck down again and there was nothing in the box at all. And that had come from DHL, I think you told me. So sometimes it's not even the seller sometimes it's the courier in between we've all just got to be so careful but credit card for me is the best thing you can do for any of you who have been through anything like this please can you actually share with us below how you got your money back if you got your money back um, tips that have worked really well for you I have also had something happen to me as a seller where the buyer denied uh, receiving the item that was a bit stupid though because she'd actually signed for it and it had gone to her registered address so I was safe in the end thank god but it happens let me know what you think please share anything that's happened to you below and I'm now going to go and talk to you in the comments <laughs>